Hi, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV, and we have with us tonight Tia Lavoie, and Hello. she is going to be talking about messages that we receive in our daily lives and in our dreams and how those affect our lives. So Indeed. tell us a little bit more about that. Well, you know, <clears throat> we have these lives and we have this, this experience and a bunch of experiences coming together that creates what we call this life. And I feel like life becomes way more enriched when we allow ourselves to take a look at the things that show up for us to, to bring us a message if we choose to go deeper. Uh, a lot of times people will go out on their life and they'll say, you know, I really want to walk in my power or I really want to, you know, be on my journey like that person over there, that person over there, but I'll never be able to do it. Well, we don't get to do those things until we're willing to take a look and take note and be present with those messages that, that come to us, that show up, like you said, in our dreams or even our waking reality. You know, everything, it, people say a lot of times, you know, that's too deep for me. This is too deep for me. It goes over my head. <laughs> you lost me. And I don't really think that's it. I think that that is a dismissive reply from our egos to keep us from going further down that rabbit hole or seeing deeper in something that's happened. Uh, when I have clients show up, one of the things I tell them is, well, I ask them, you know, well, have you ever been in a car accident? Have you ever had a, a major surgery or a health issue? Uh, anyone close to you pass? When those things happen, usually everybody's head drops and they say, oh yeah, this happened or that happened. Well, those things that happen, those experiences, that's the catalyzation. These things show up in our worlds so that we become catalyzed, so that we get to see how powerful we really are, our, our super, it's the way that we tap mm -hmm. into, so to speak. And I think that it's inherently important that we pay attention to the things that show up for us along this journey. And if we pay attention and we catch the message, then what happens is life goes that much deeper. We go further down that rabbit hole and we get to understand more about the situation that's going on and also more about ourselves. Everything out here is a 360 degree mirror for ourselves whatever you notice in somebody else at the office or that person you sleep next to at night whatever you notice about anybody else or anything else what you are noticing is an aspect of yourself and so in understanding that that guy that cut you off in traffic that you were cursing at that morning and you know what an asshole or whatever people say that guy you notice the thing about yourself. Now, when we look at a mirror and we look at our reflection in the mirror, what we see in that mirror and that reflection is both the shadow and the light. That's called contrast. We have to have contrast in our lives so that we can sit present and we can remember what we're looking at as our own reflections in, in our journeys and our lives. I think it's really beautiful when people start to go deeper. I think it's really beautiful when people move beyond their, their ego's replies to any time that we want to level up in life. I think that when we can move through that not good enough or I'll never be like them or I'll never be as spiritually advanced or aware or I'll never be able to or I can or I shouldn't or this won't. When we move past that, when we can push through our ego conversations, that's when we get courageous. See, courage, that word courage, yeah. it comes from the word. It comes from the phrase. It's old French, and it means to take action from your heart. So when we take wow. action from our hearts, we are being courageous. If we take enough steps and courage, what happens is we become fearless. 
to walk fearlessly. That's, that's our power right there. Because when we're walking fearlessly, it's way easier for us to pick up the messages that show up in our, in our worlds via people, via however those messages come, our dreams even. So when we pay attention and we start to choose to be more courageous, what happens is our lives become that much more enriched. <laughs> Personally. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've noticed that. <laughs> do this you is, think, this how do you get people to, like, I've heard people say you could get a message from how your car is acting, like my car keeps dying. Yes. Is that a message? Yes. My teacher taught me very early in my apprenticeship with him that nothing happens at random and everything is speaking to us. Everything. If I'm driving, if I'm even driving down the highway and I've got a question, I pay attention to the billboards because usually there's a message or I turn on the radio and turn it to a random station and I listen to the song or I listen to what they're speaking about. There's always a message everywhere because we're constantly in the state of, of growing and expansion. Our, our bodies, Julia, our bodies are in this constant state of death in order to live. It's called apoptosis. Apoptosis is cellular death. Now, what that means. So basically apoptosis is when you have a cell in your body, any one of a billions of billions of billions of cells, any one of these cells that's not working in tip top shape and tip top condition, full throttle, it sends a message up to the brain. And the brain takes in this information and sends back a message in the form of a protein called P53. P53 is, is the, uh, the blueprint for that cell to literally break itself down until it's nothing but a little, a little bubble of air that comes to the surface. And then a new cell comes in, a new cell grows, and a new cell takes its place. Our bodies naturally are in a state of apoptosis. They are dying in order for us to continue living. That is miraculous. We don't even <laughs> have to know about this. <laughs> like, I don't just know anything it. about this. <laughs> I, I don't think it would work well if I had to think about that constantly. Oh, this cell in my pinky, this cell in my foot, this cell in my elbow, this cell in my brain. It's amazing. So also part of catching the messages that show up around us in life is paying attention to our bodies, paying attention to our cars, paying attention to our relationships. I, you know, I, I do a lot of, of zodiac astrology work. And I tell people when, when they say, you know, well, I'm really skeptical and I've only shown up because, you know, you had a session with my sister, or my mother, or whoever. Uh -huh. Astrology readings are the same as understanding neuroscience or biomolecular chemical understandings or physical stuff or paying attention to the animal that crossed your path on the on your walk home or your ride home uh you can look at anything you can look at the symbology of the year that we're in you can look at the symbology of your age i'm 39 right now three plus nine is 12 so you have 12 so one plus two would be three i am in a 12 year i'm in a three year so you can look at that numerologically. There's so many ways to see what's going on and see what you're choosing. But starting with your body is one. Now the question was, how do you get people to see? How do you get people to start yeah. working? The first thing, they have to realize that they're worth it in anything. If you want to change jobs, you want to have more faith in the universe, if you want to leave that person, you have to realize that you're worth it to do it. If you want to go deeper down the rabbit hole of understanding symbolism, you have to, you have to realize your self-worth. If you don't realize that you're priceless, that's when people can be sold. Our actions can be sold. We, our actions can be bought. And so it's really important that, you know, how I see it is that we're all love, all of us, even the people that society would deem evil in this world. Ultimately, there's a divinity, there's a, there's a heart space, there's love inside of that. And so 
And so being able to witness yourself as love and being able to witness this person over here that you get along with and being able to witness this boss, being able to witness these customers that show up, being able to witness those people that you don't really even like, being able to hold them in a space of love does a lot of things alchemically. It changes situations all the time. A lot of times people are afraid to, to accept that they're valuable, that they're worth it, that they're priceless. It's really, it's really interesting to me when I first got into this work, it was like, all right, what's the first step? Because you know, you're going to get hit with hows. Anytime people want to work on themselves, they're going to ask how, how, how. Well, I've learned to tell people how, save that how for after you've done the thing, after you've gotten whatever it is that you desired, after you've manifested, after you've, you've made it to where you want to be, then you can look back. And in your hindsight, you can see how. You can go back and say, all right, I took that step and that took me to that step and that took me to that step and that took me to that step. Uh -huh. Don't worry about the hows until after you've gotten the thing. <laughs> that seems kind of, you've got to do something to get there. Intention. Intention is really important. You know, people make great strides with their health, with their spirituality, with their awareness, with their awakening or whatever we want to call it. You, you got to know that you're worth it. And then you have to have an intention. Intentions are really powerful because that changes where you've been headed. When we think about a thing, when we believe in something, when we think about it, when we talk about it, when we take action from believing in it, what happens is we create a neuroassociation. That neuroassociation is basically a, another little wrinkle in our brain matter. Uh -huh. And so when we create a neuroassociation, if we do things over and over, if we repeat them, neuroassociation becomes stronger. Well, the beauty about realizing that, that love is what we are is that you've been lying. We've been lying to ourselves for so long, telling ourselves we're not good enough. We, we, don't, we never will be able to. We can't. We shouldn't. We won't. It'll never happen. And then we stop ourselves with how. How's it going to happen? What happens is that neuroassociation gets really strong. But the truth is a, is a really good um, catalyst for things. Because the truth helps us to create a change in that neural association that breaks up that cycling and that repetition. Mm -hmm. I went to the Amazon about five years ago and I went by myself and I had decided that either I was going to have a great awakening or I was going to get eaten by a jaguar and no one would ever hear from me again. <laughs> and <I'm> Scorpio. <laughs> Oh, you're sure you'll get eaten by a jaguar, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> so, so what happened is I'm, I'm walking with my guide. His name was Edgar. Now, I'm sure in his jungle tongue, his name's not Edgar, but Edgar was a good name for him for me. Yeah. So, so Edgar and I are walking, and we have two machetes, and we're slicing through the jungle. And I mean, you're in the jungle. It's full of overgrowth. Like, it, it, there's not a whole lot of space going on because everything's competing for the light. Yeah. So we're, we're walking through this jungle, and we're not on a trail. We're just cutting through where we step. And I was told repeatedly by everyone before going in the jungle, you know, uh, don't touch any of the animals. Don't reach out and grab a tree because this tree create is, has thorns and, and creates this poison and it will kill you in 12 seconds if it touches you. Don't touch this frog. Don't try and pet anything. Don't try anything. Be careful wherever you go. Everything will kill you in 12 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> so you were all set to die for sure. <laughs> I, oh, it was happening, Julie. I thought it was really happening. So what happens is I'm watching him. Well, you know, I live in the mountains and if I'm out hiking, I have a good point of reference by, okay, I parked my car in front of this mountain. So if I keep this mountain in front of me, then I know that that's how I can get back. Well, we're in the jungle. It's There's no people who are from the mountains because we do everything by where the mountains yes. are. Yes. So, so I'm watching Edgar and I say, Edgar, 
how are we getting to this place if we're not on a trail or a path? And he says, uh, we're going to this, this lagoon, this magic lagoon that the, the moon goddess came down in when the conquistadors came and this magic lagoon we're going to that the tourists don't get to go to usually. Okay. And so I say, Edgar, you know, how are we getting to this place? I haven't seen you use a map. We've been traveling, so you're not watching the stars. And there's really no points of reference or landmarks that you can say, oh, the lagoon's over this way or the lagoon's over that way. So he turns around and he looks at me. And in very broken English, we have this conversation about intention. And so Edgar tells me that he's 21 years old, but I swear he doesn't look a day over 12. <laughs> he tells me about the jungle people. And he's a San Andreas Indian. He's from the San Andreas tribe. And so he says, you know, the people in the jungle are still very much connected to the messages of the jungle and what Pachamama, which is the, the mother earth, she speaks to them. And so he says, so anytime that we want to go somewhere, we just hold the intention in our minds and we hold that vision in our, in our, behind our eyes and we start heading in the direction that our hearts tell us to go. And what happens is, as we start walking in one direction, the jungle circles and she twists and turns so that wherever our destination desired is, we'll eventually meet up right in front of us. I loved that. I, I didn't even pay extra for this. Thank you, Edgar. I don't need this to say, you know, a day later, we find ourselves at the lagoon and we find our way back as well. That was a really magical trip for me. And, and that was really beautiful. That was a really beautiful lesson with him. <laughs> so I take that and I play it here too, you know. If you oh, have... Yeah have a desire if you have a thing that you want then you need to you know shoot your arrow and let it go and then start walking in that direction to the thing that you desire because when you start walking in that direction and you just hold the thoughts and the sights and the vision for that thing that you want the universe is going to move things around that's the thing with people i think so i've actually found people in big crowds that way just you know, and I know I'm going to run right into him, and I do. <laughs> there you go. That's how it works, Julia. You know, another thing is is really interesting about that the application. A lot of times, people will they'll say they want a thing. Oh, I want this thing to happen, or or they say, Ah, oh, I need this thing to. I need. Don't ever say need. My teacher taught me that. Say I deserve. I'm worthy for. Because when you put yourself in that state of need, you're emitting that vibration out here. And so the universe, like I said, 360 degree mirror, it's going to reflect you need back. It's going to give you more things and more situations where you feel like, I need this. I, I need this. And, and now you start feeling desperate. And then you just keep feeding that energy. And that's going to be the reflection. So yeah. one of the things about application is when you say that you want something, you have to you're changing the whole game. When you decide like, you know, you, you, you put your big girl panties on, so to speak, and you know, something has to give, something has to change here. Well, I see a lot of times people will, you know, they'll make that journey up their mountain. They will go and speak to their gods or their God. They will make their sacrifice. They'll have their ritual. And then just before the, the holy deity says, okay, you know, I will grant you this. They turn around and they say, oh, you know, I'd never get that anyways. That, that'll never Oh, happen. no. So they wipe it out. They do. And that's a big, that's a big, big catalyzation for people. If you want something, it's really important that you hold the vision for that thing and you make sure that your thoughts, your, your words, and your actions are all in that direction. Because you're the one that's walking that way. You're the one that's going towards wherever you let your arrow fly. You did that. And so you start walking towards it and then you say, oh, well, what's that over there? And there's nothing wrong with what's over there, but how badly do you want this thing that you were pointing your arrow at and letting it go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you, um, I'm thinking of a specific person who's very depressed Okay. And always, she's always saying, things never work for me. I never get what I want. 
Uh, nothing ever works right for me. And I've tried and tried to tell her, you can't talk like that. You, it's, you're, and I can't seem to get through to her. How do you do that? What's this person's sun sign? I like to know who I'm speaking to. Uh, she's born in November, November 22nd. Okay, so she's on the cusp of Scorpio and Sagittarius. Okay. So the beginning of it, it doesn't, you know, I'm from the South originally. And one of the phrases that we have is closed mouths don't get fed. We have to learn to speak. If we don't speak and ask for things, we don't get our, we don't get our nourishment. We don't get the things that we need. This goes back to reminding her of her own self-worth. Now, here's the thing. It's really important that when we go to speak to somebody, especially when they're in that space, that you're not talking at them. You know, what's the matter with you? Like, why are you doing this? Don't you see what you're doing? You can't, you can't not tell the dog, don't go in the house and then go rub its nose in it when it goes in the house. You have to let that dog know, hey, you're a good boy. Like this, you need to let us know. It's the same thing. You have to let her know, hey, do you realize it, that you're worth it to grow? Do you, do you realize it that you're worth it to live this life as richly as you desire in whatever way that you want? And it's entirely up to you, and I'm not trying to put anything on you, but hey, Scorpio Sag, do you understand that you are creating all of this with your thoughts, and that begins with your thoughts about yourself? When was the last time you felt accomplished? When was the last time you sat back and said, hey, I am so grateful for this success right here? When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you smiled? When was the last time you watched a funny movie? Like, what's your favorite funny movie? Because I'm coming over Friday night and I'm gonna make <laughs> you popcorn and we're gonna watch this funny movie and it better make me, that's, yeah. how, that's how you handle it with people like that for sure. People melt at that. You know, people, a thing about people is we're so funny because we are such good storytellers. We will tell ourselves, we will write a story like that. We will write a story so quickly, even if we have no idea what's going on. If we just walk up in a space, we will start writing a story. The thing to understand is when you write a story, you are writing a story based on your self-worth, and your interpretation and actions of those self-worth. So when you look at something and you say, oh, this is a problem. Oh, this always happens. Oh God, this is horrible. You can look at it like that and you can write that story and there's nothing wrong with it. But if you want things to change, if, if you want to get to that super secret magical lagoon in the Amazon with Edgar, <laughs> you know, you, then it's very important that your story that you're writing is one that feels good to you, one that's fulfilling in your heart. And so you can look at a thing as a problem or you can look at a thing as a catalyst. This thing is going to help me. There's a story about um, Quetzalcoatl and the emperor. Quetzalcoatl came to the people in Central America. He taught them writing. He teaches them about astronomy. He teaches them all kinds of magic. And then one day he has to go. And the people, the emperor, goes to Quetzalcoatl and the, the emperor says, you know, father, we know that you're leaving. And Quetzalcoatl says, don't worry, I'm going to come back. And he says, well, can you give us just one more bit of wisdom to keep us nourished and, and satisfied until your return? And so Quetzalcoatl turns to the emperor and he says, here's your wisdom. All antagonisms are complementary. So ultimately there's nothing against us everything is happening in our big old 360 degree mirror because it's showing us ourselves and showing us what we're choosing in this life if you start to look at your things if you start to look at the curses and see the blessing in them that takes you up a level in in self-mastery that helps you walk in love if you start to work with the first grace of reverence the first grace is the grace of reverence. Reverence is to, to uphold or to exalt. It starts with yourself. And so if you can walk with your knowing that, hey, I am a powerful creative being. I'm, I'm here living my life and the experience that I want to have.
and you start seeing that in other people, then what happens is your, your mirror, your 360 degree life starts to reflect that. <laughs> Tell us more about your class you're starting in January. Oh, okay. Dreamweaver. So Dreamweaver is all about understanding the symbology of your dreams and the messages in your waking life. When you're hiking on a trail and a fox crosses your path, well, was it a, a orange fox? Was it a silver fox? Was it a gray fox? Was it a blue fox? Which direction was it going? How many were there? Did you see any birds on this walk? All of these things are symbolic. And so in Dreamweaver, there are, there are certain exercises and there are certain things that we'll be exploring. It's a five-week telecourse. Uh, it involves five teleconference classroom sessions and also four 30-minute sessions with me where we speak one-on-one -on -one and, uh, and discuss, you know, where you're at, your progress, how you're, how you're working through it. We started to offer this class in the beginning of the year because, you know, everybody makes these resolutions. I got to get to the gym. I got to do this. I got to be more compassionate. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Yes, absolutely. Me too. And also working on the interior absolutely changes the exterior reflection. And so in Dreamweaver, you know, we'll be keeping dream journals and we'll be sharing what those dreams are looking like. And I'll go through systematically and I'll show people how to interpret and translate the, the symbology of their own dreams. Because I get a lot of clients that show up and they say things like, well, we'll be talking and I say, well, when was the last time that you dreamt? And they'll say, oh, I, oh, God, I had one last night. And oh, no, you don't, you, you won't, you won't even want to work with me if, if I tell you about this dream. <laughs> And I say, you know, I've been doing this for 17 years. Like, I, I, not a lot surprises me anymore. And if it does, then you're going to get a Batman cookie and it's going to be good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happens is they say, they, we, have a, we have a dream and we wake up and immediately we say, oh God, that, that was a crazy dream or that was a nightmare. Or, this was so bad or, oh God, does this mean this is going to happen in this life? No, your consciousness has to speak to you through symbology because that's the oldest language that we know, looking at symbolism. The oldest part of our brain is called the R complex. That means the reptilian mind. And so the oldest part of our brain is where the pituitary and the pineal glands sit across from each other. And what they do is they create these little synaptic firings that allow us interpretation. Now, when we dream, again, if we wake up and we aren't holding ourselves in a, in a priceless self-worth, if we're not holding ourselves as valuable, we look at that dream and interpret it in the way that we look at ourselves. Oh God, that was a horrible dream. Oh, is this gonna happen? Am I, does that mean I'm gonna get a wreck today on my way to work? Is, this, is coffee gonna spill on me? Whatever it is. That dream is holding a symbolism for you. It's trying to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. But when we go to sleep and we have a dream and we wake up and we say, Whoa, what, what was that dream? Well, our brains are naturally wired to begin dissolving that dream because our brains deal with a lot of filters in our everyday life. The more that you look at symbology in your world, the deeper your life goes, the more that you see. The deeper down the rabbit hole, we get to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Just change those filters. Tell That's us where people can find out more about this. You can, find, you can find out about Dreamweaver at mm -hmm. www.belovecelove.com. B oh. as in B-E-L-O-V-E, S-E-E-L-O-V-E.com. That's my own personal website. Thank B -E -E you, Julia. B-E-E or just one E? B? One E. Love, uh -huh. love .com. I'm putting correct. it on the chat thing. Uh, thank okay. you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And any of uh, people watching this, go to her website, belovecelove.com. Thank you. You can also find me on Facebook at Tia Lavoie, L-A-V-O-I-E. Okay. And you can also find her at shamanicarts.studio. Yes, please. <laughs> thank you, Julia. Thank you. Happy, happy solstice. Happy solstice to you as well. Take care.